everybody. Lovely to see you all here this morning. Um, and welcome to people online. I've not done this before, so I'm really certain that I'm going to keep forgetting that we're online and forget to look at the camera. So if I do, I apologize to all of you online and I'll give you a big wave now. So, um, and those of you in person, lovely to see you all. Um, we've got Paul leading worship for us today, so thanks very much for coming along. That's brilliant. And we've got Simon talking to us, so I'm sure we'll be in for a treat this morning. So, without further ado, we're going to hand over to Paul for our first worship song, and after that, we'll send stars out. And okay, morning all. Psalm 40 says, uh, those that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not be faint. You know, my experience of running is that being weary happens about a minute and a half after I've started. Um, and what's there? Yeah, know what you mean, mate. But God says, I'm going to renew your strength. A bit like when you plug your phone in to charge it up. So if you're feeling like you're on about 20%, my encouragement to you this morning is plug into God and let him charge you up. It says strength rises as we wait on the Lord. So we're going to wait. Well, actually, we're not just going to sit and wait. We're going to sing as well. But uh, in our hearts... We're waiting, we're plugging in. If, listen, if you're cooking at 85%, brilliant, that's great. Let's get you up to 100% as well, and let's do that. So, without further ado, let's stand, and we're going to pray, and then we're going to begin. Father, I'm so glad that you're here with us today uh, in this room. You're here with us at home, and Lord, our desire is that we give you the praise and the worship that rightfully belongs to you because you're worth it. And we know that as we do that, uh, you're just going to stir our hearts up and do us good. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait on the Lord. Do not 
God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. And again, our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong time for stars and crash to come over and if I can just pray for you all before you go out that would be really lovely Father God thank you for these wonderful children both here in the building and the people down in the old school building and over in the school father please be with them all this morning as these wonderful helpers take them all go 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 take them all father be with them all thank you in Jesus name amen the great things uh, that God does for us um, and we're also going to remind ourselves um, about uh, some of those things too and also about who he is you know, it's really important that we worship with our brains as well as our hearts that's what the Bible means when it talks about worshipping in spirit and in truth so uh, yeah let's do that great thing. worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things Of heaven, you've conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Our Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. storm you've been faithful forevermore will you have done great things and I know you will do it again because your promise is yes and amen oh God you do great things you have done great things Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name 
done great things Hallelujah God Above it all Hallelujah God Unshakable Hallelujah You have done great things You've done great things Oh hero of heaven You've conquered the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh God You have done great things We dance in your freedom Awake and alive Our Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God You have done great things You have done great
Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to ask Rebecca to come up, who's going to lead us in prayer this morning. So, thank you. So I thought um, that our prayers this morning would focus on what we've been talking about, listening to God. Father, there are so many ways that we can hear your voice. But one of the first places we should maybe look is your word. Lord, thank you for the scriptures of the Bible. Thank you that no matter the circumstances, whether it be the most amazing joy or the most, the deepest grief, Lord, thank you that there is an answer in Scripture. Thank you that you gave your word through the various writers of the Bible. That we may know your love and hear your guidance. Father, thank you for placing Christian friends in our way. And they may maybe people that we don't know, people that we meet at bus stops, in the street, in our workplaces. Thank you that we can hear from you through them. Thank you that some of our biggest revelation can come through the words that other people say to us. And thank you for the conversation that we can have with you through prayer. Thank you that you don't care if we're angry or sad or if we simply don't know what to say. Thank you that through the intercession of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we can talk to you through groans. You don't need to hear clever words. We don't need to hear anything at all, but thank you for the conversation that we can have through groans when we're in despair. Thank you for the gift of prayer. And thank you for the worship that we can have, whether it be in church, or in our cars, or in our homes. Thank you that you've given us the technology that means that we can hear music that is, you know, to your praise at any time. And thank you for the writers of those amazing worship songs throughout the centuries. Thank you for the psalms that, you know, give the basis for so many of those songs. And thank you for silence. Thank you that we can feel your presence so tangibly in times of quiet. Thank you for nature. 
where we can walk and see your creation in all its glory, all of the seasons of the year. Thank you that you speak to us through the wind in the trees, the rustling of leaves. And we hear about dreams, Lord, where people have really heard your voice through the dreams that they've had. And we maybe overlook some of the messages that we can receive from you whilst we're asleep. Thank you, Lord, that sleep is you know, restful and restorative. And we ask you to speak to us at those times. Lord, to take this opportunity to pray for various people in our community, people who are sick and need your healing, people who are in the deepest places of grief, Lord, and particularly this week we pray for Henry, uh, for Henry's family as they prepare for his funeral. Lord, thank you for giving us so many opportunities to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. And today's reading is from 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 to 7. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he'll kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I'll show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask Simon to come and join me now. You are allowed to take your mask off. This. Oh, <laughs> okay, we'll just pray for Simon before he brings us his, the, the word. Okay, Father God, thank you so much for Simon. Thank you that he is going to be sharing your word through him, Father. Please give him the right words to touch our hearts this morning, Father. Father, whatever we talk, we, we need to know that it's from you, Father. And, and Father, just, just use us as your vessels, Father. Just put the right words into our mouths. Bless us all here this morning. Simon, thank you for, for being here this morning. And thank you for, for stepping up and for being with us here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Jim. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are well. Turn that off. I'm going to have to move the lectern slightly forward because I'm going to use my PowerPoint as my name, like every good teacher does. Well, um, there's been a little bit of confusion. Um, I was told by Tim that the passage was 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 30. 
So we're going to go slightly further than what Rebecca's read, but thank you, Rebecca, for reading, and thank you for your prayers as well, um, that build into what we're talking about. This is sort of, if you imagine, the, uh, the passage in the Old Testament that's a bit like the end of the first Lord of the Rings film, and they're just about to go into the Two Towers part of the film, where we see this quite pivotal moment for Israel, where we see David uh, become chosen. And what I like a lot about this passage, um, and why I think it's very apt that we finish this Listening to God uh, series in this passage, is we're going to see that culmination of all of the characteristics of Samuel that we've heard about just come together into this final moment uh, where we see David appointed. So there's sort of three key things that I want to pull out of to the passage today. The first is obedience is necessary. And I think um, where I felt God prompt for us as a church household is that as we go into um, the new year, we have to be really obedient to what he is teaching and telling us um, in what we believe and how we are reaching um, to the people of Shepton, Littleton and, and elsewhere. Second, character is key. You know, we've spent a long time uh, talking about Samuel's character, that, that pivotal phrase he says, here I am, Lord, uh, send me, choose me, and, and we really see that come to fruition today. And in turn, um, we then get to see the character of David begin to emerge. And then finally, following is bold. And I really want, I'm hoping, I'm praying, in fact, that um, with one of the images that God has given me, um, that we can all be encouraged as we leave here today about where we move forward. Um, I'm a bit exogenial in my style of preaching, um, which means I like to go through verse by verse and just pull out some key points. So I've broken the passage down, um, going through these, these key thoughts. But first is this line here. Um, excellent. That is not how I loaded the PowerPoint. So uh, thank you, God, that you have shown us that performance isn't important again. <laughs> right. the first thing I want to talk about here is, is, is where do we find Samuel where does he start um, in, in this passage he actually starts by mourning for Saul and I think that's quite an obedient characteristic um, that we see of Samuel that even though we see um, Saul's character at this point he becomes quite prideful he becomes quite villainous or poisonous um, but David's loyalty and respect of his elders still comes through that, that key Christian trait so we, we find him um, starting off with this morning. And then the Lord speaks to Samuel. Samuel has become more accustomed and, and, and trained in how to hear God. And God then says, why are you still mourning? Um, can you not see that I have rejected him? I, I have said that you're no longer, Saul is no longer to be your king. And uh, I think if I was Samuel at this point, I'd be a little bit taken aback by that comment. I'd be a little bit thrown because Saul was the one who was appointed and, and chosen to be put in power. And now God has seemed to have changed to an extent um, what he was saying. But this is where obedience comes in. Samuel, we see from the passage, doesn't question God or doesn't um, ask God to prove or go into further detail. He's instead just obedient to the Lord and follows on for what he says Fill your horn with oil. David would have recognized that this was for a sacrament um, and going through that process at the time. There we go. Excellent. Cool. There are the pictures. Thank you. Um, so he, was he would take uh, the time to fill the horn and, and be ready to process into Bethlehem um, to find Jesse. And, and hopefully, if you know your Bible, uh, then you'll know Bethlehem is quite significant, maybe in the next few weeks as well for us. And then God said, I've provided myself a king among his sons. Now Saul was the king of the people. Saul was um, chosen by the people of which God worked through. But Saul, in his nature, um, sadly did not succeed. But here now we see that God has chosen this king of David who becomes um, the lineage of, of Jesus. Someone says, well, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will surely kill me. You know, and then we start to see this human person of Samuel comes through. He's scared for his life. But again, that obedient character of Samuel comes through. And he does what he says. Take a heifer, a cow. I had to look that word up. Uh, um, and must not call anyone that moving forward. Um, <laughs> just, 
things you learn. <laughs> uh, take a cow in order to be sacrificed. And again, this is another example of Samuel's obedience, that he understood the practice that God was calling him uh, to do and follow through. Move to the city, meet with Jesse. And then from there, I will show you what to do. Now, I um, hate when people make surprises for me. Um, I've got a wonderful girlfriend, Hannah, who's with the youth today, and uh, she decided um, a few weeks ago that she would surprise me with something um, which did not go down well. And what she said is, I had to come back from work by 4.30, I had to get changed, and then be on a train into London. And I, the night before, very much struggled to not ask her, what are we doing, what do I need, what should I wear, do I need any cash, all of these sorts of very, very small things. And that sort of level of trust issue um, to, to give that autonomy over to someone else. And I think it really says a lot to us about Samuel as a believer that he was willing to do this, travel quite some distance to go and sacrifice this um, cow in God's name. And then when he was there to just do what God said. I wonder, can we be disobedient to God as we continue listening for God's word. Next slide, please. So we see Samuel then travel into Bethlehem and we see him approach and there's firstly this incident, which I won't go into, where they're, they're, they're worried, does he come in peace? Um, they're worried that Saul might um, have sent Samuel to send him a warning, but um, we don't need to spend in that. But instead he says here, you know, peaceably I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. You know, I, I use a Billy bookcase here. I don't know if any of you are IKEA fans, but I, um, I'm not very good at following instructions. I sort of try and put it together as I want. Um, I've got a Billy bookcase at home, which isn't, uh, I can see one of the shelves isn't quite put in properly, but it works, so that's fine. But here, Dave, um, Samuel knew that he had to be obedient to the law and to the process at the time. And that would have been a, a factor of trust uh, into the people in Bethlehem and also to the family of Jesse. And through this process, through what God had told Samuel to do, he was obedient in following that instruction moving forward. I wonder, are we obedient in what God has called us to do? When God says to us, don't sin, do we still endeavor to not sin? Or are we more comfortable with some sins that we feel are justified? Because I think as we continue to pursue God and continue to listen to God and become the best Christians that we can be for him, we have to pay a bit more attention to what we need to be obedient to. Next section. Okay, this part on character, and I, uh, I rung Jane yesterday, and we were just having a talk about this, and we talked about um, a teaching of a man called Bill Hybels. Sadly, uh, Bill Hybels is maybe not a name that we would share so comfortably in church anymore. Um, but he had a really good principle when he talks about um, how to be a leader as a Christian. And he says it's about um, character, then it's about your competence, and then it's about your chemistry. And I think this is so abundantly clear whenever we see God choose leaders in the Bible that he's most interested, as we see at the end of this um, passage, about the heart that God has. Can I have the next animation, please? Remind me where I'm going. Uh, yeah, do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. So uh, Eliab, um, the eldest son of Jesse, um, would have been maybe your Captain America type manner at this time. So would have been seen to have been very good at war, um, would have led many battles. He was sort of like me, very big and muscly. Mine's relaxed at the moment. Um, but, you know, we would have maybe thought this is the person uh, that God would have wanted to put as king. But then Samuel gets told, no, I, I'm not interested. He, he's not um, who I want. And why? Because there was an issue with Eliab's heart. And actually Samuel then goes through all the other sons of Jesse and finds that God is not interested in them either because their heart is not right with God. And through Tim's encouragement as we've done this series about listening to God and, and taking that time to be still, you know, I love what Rebecca said about thank you for silence 
You know, that is us steadying and readying our hearts to be with God. And God then instead looks for David, who I've likened here to Spider-Man. Spider-Man, the youngest of the Avengers, you know, often is very unsure of what he's supposed to do, but will follow Tony Stark. He is very obedient and has that character to want to serve, that goodwill that we come on to see. Next slide, please. And this is where Samuel follows God's word. Samuel remembers earlier on that God said, I will show you what to do. He's holding on to that where he follows God's word. Samuel says, look, is there anybody else? Is there any sons that you've not listed yet? And Jesse says, yes, my youngest. He remains out looking after the sheep. You know, this core idea in Christianity of Jesus the shepherd. David was working late at night, um, looking after the sheep in a rural area by himself. Would have been fending off wolves. Would have been that protector character for innocent sheep. That exact heart that God was looking for. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And there um, I resisted putting a picture of myself. And instead... Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, I looked up ruddy because I wasn't really sure what ruddy meant, um, but it sort of means, you know, that they've, they're well tanned, you know, they might have some blistering from being out in the sun, which would infer to us quite how committed David was to looking after the sheep. And again, we're then back to David's character that he was so giving of himself to what he was tasked to do. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is the one. You know, it's at this moment we see that king of Israel, this pivotal character in the Old Testament, begin his journey as the king. And how did we get there? Because Samuel, from a young age, was attentive to God's word. He listened, he honed in on the teaching, and he responded. He was obedient to what was said. He en endeavoured a godly character, and then followed what God was looking for. So where does this leave us? What application or what idea then do we have for us moving forward? Next slide, please. Thank you. Well, let's take this verse in Acts. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And that is what God is calling us to do on a daily basis. Us to live for him to know his heart and to do what he asks us to do. I am so fortunate that I get to work as a teacher. I love my job. And I believe God has called me to be a teacher. And I recognize how fortunate I am to be there. Yes, I do not like waking up in the dark and going home in the dark. And I can tell you lots of stories about how children trial me and trouble me. But I know in good faith that God has purposed me to be doing this. And I love it. And I wonder, are there people here who can say that? And if you are yet to find that, then there's two things that we can take. One, you probably are doing what God wants you to do already. I think when we talk about calling, there's sort of this big idea of grandeur that comes through. And we think we're going to do something awesome um, and, and large scale. When actually, the little things in life are so, so important. I always think about... Um, uh, a plane crashing whenever I think about calling. Bear with me, bear with me. When a plane crashes, who have we got? We've got the engineers that have built that plane. We've got the pilot who's flying that plane. We've got the people that have done the safety checks. We've got the people that packed that parachute. And when that parachute works and saves that life, that person has done their purpose because they've packed that parachute. But actually, so is the engineer making sure that that plane is safe. So is the pilot making sure that it's flown safe till that point is grounded. You know, we, we, we often think so much, as I say, about the idea of grandeur when actually it's even people who are doing um, unseen roles that are equally as important. And if we're doing that because God has called us to do it and we're doing it with a godly heart, then that is fantastic. And that is what we are called to do. Next slide. So some questions for us to ponder. Obedience is necessary. As I stated earlier, are we being obedient in all aspects of our life? 
Are we ensuring that what God has called us to be, if we do believe, that we are following them? And I think also it is okay for question. I don't think Samuel was wrong to question and say, hang on, Saul will kill me. I, I don't think at any point Samuel was wrong for doing that. Because I think what's not noted here is Samuel questioned and prayed and waited and followed. You know, again, our joy of the Bible is we see a collection of sentences over hundreds of years. You know, just remember that. I think it's really good for us to wrestle and question things. Um, you know, I'm sure you're part of a men's group or a women's group or some form of small group. You know, it's really good to delve down into what's happening and think really carefully but to be obedient to what God is calling us to do is paramount. Next slide, please. Um, character is key. Uh, can we focus on godly character more than competence? When we look to others of who we, um, you know, if we, we want to continue pursuing God and becoming more godly, look to people who are godly in their character not who is appointed to be competent. I, I don't think Tim would mind me sharing this, actually. But we were at Beer and Bible a few weeks ago, and uh, I can't really remember what the question was, but it ended up being, Tim, should we look to live like you? Should we look to copy you? And, and Tim was very comfortable in saying, no, um, I should be godly and I should be Christian because that's what I'm called to do, but don't copy me. But see where I'm godly in my character, which I thought was very humble of him to say and then uh, maintain our efforts be more Christ-like as we listen to God um, I am not perfect at prayer I'm pretty sure a lot of us in here are not still even though we spent six weeks talking about it but we've got to keep on trying I describe my job as hitting my head against a brick wall um, with some students that I work with but I've got to maintain my effort with them they need to know they're valued we're here for them in the same way I've got to maintain developing my prayer life and listening to God. Next one, please. Thank you. Uh, following is bold. Okay, so like Samuel and David, uh, continue what God has tasked us to do in the immediacy and the future. And I, I think there's a really exciting season that Mary Magdalene's moving through. Um, it's part of the reason Hannah and I sort of wanted to come join this church is we think that there, there's some real harvest going to be appearing, which is very Christian what I've just said there. So let me break that down. Um, it's growing lots of people it's growing, the kids and the youth work are fantastic the um, cornerstone as well as the, the ministries there are people coming in left, right and centre and I think hallelujah God you're bringing people to us but they're coming, it's now our job our role to be available and again, back to packing the parachute, flying the plane you know where is our role within that? And then being attentive and ready for God to use us. Or you. And I think us and you is a really good phrase there. I think there is a thing about you as the individual and how God wants to use you, but also a thing of us as the household. How does God want to use us as a collective body? As we support bags of food and a food bank, as we support the work of the Church of England, as we support the, the work of the local schools, whatever it is, how is he going to use us and how are we ready to do that? So I want to share with you this image, which um, back in lockdown, um, that sort of January to March, um, I rung Tim and said, can we go for a little walk? Can we just have a bit of a chat about joining the church, what it's like? And Tim said yes. And I very quickly learned that I need to walk quite fast if I'm with Tim Rose, um, which for the third time I'll reference my size is not my skill. Um, so we absolutely pegged it around Shepparton via knock cuts through Leyland. He sort of walked past the rectory and went, that's my house. And then he was gone by the time I'd finished looking at it. And uh, I just got to the outside Fresh Gym near where um, I live. And I just got this real sense to say to Tim that it just feels like Mary Magdalene is this field that has been, the soil has been turned, the rocks have been lifted. It's all ready to be sown and ploughed. And I think there is such potential here. And I think the question for us is as we continue listening to God and we continue responding to God, what 
is our role in tending this? What is it that we are going to do? Let's pray. Loving God and gracious Father, it's by no incident or coincidence that we are here today. You have worked in us and shown us how much we love you. And Lord, as we pray, help us hear. Like Samuel, we say, here we are. Choose us. Tell us how you want us to further your kingdom here. Send your spirit, Lord. God, we pray as we move into the season of Christmas, we remember your gift of Jesus to us as baby born. Pray we come to you in readiness and expectation of how you want to move through this church household. Father, speak so clearly to us that we ready our hearts for what you are calling us into. We are here. We are listening. We ask this all in your name. Amen. You know, I think yeah, that was absolutely fantastic, Simon. Thank you. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I think there was definitely some things in that 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 each and every one of us can, you know, can think about. And you know, something that I frequently do actually um, now that we now that we have the facility to do so is go back and listen to a talk again online. And I can confidently say that's one that I will go back to listen to. So thank you so much. That was really lovely. Um, let me take my mask off. Um, something I just also want to quickly talk about is, is prayer. And for me, praying out loud isn't something that has always come easily. You know, I've not always found it easy to, to speak out loud and to pray and whatever. And something that's really helped me is our weekly prayer meetings. And so I would like to encourage any of you here that haven't been to the weekly prayer meetings, just give it a try. It's online now as well. And so actually, nobody's looking at you. Nobody, you know, if you want to turn your screen off, then turn your screen off. But it's just a really powerful thing to, to be listening to other people and to pray together. Um, and with that in mind, I'd also like to say that at the end of this morning, if anybody feels that they would like prayer or just to sit and pray together, then there's plenty of us around that would be more than happy to, um, 
to pray together. So take the opportunity, and it would be lovely if any of you would like to. Without further ado, I'm going to hand back over to Paul. At uh, the picture that uh, Simon put up earlier of that field, and I'm thinking, that's great. I have no idea how to plough a field. Not a clue. Yeah, my training is in accountancy. I don't do ploughing fields. And you know, God is not the kind of God who says, right, this is what I want you to do, and uh, I'm going to come back when you've done it, and uh, it'll be fine. Bye. No. What God says is, this is what we're going to do together, and uh, I'm going to be right here when you do it. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to show you how it goes. When we look at some of the stuff that God calls us to do, we think, I can't do this. But it's all right. Because he says, it's all right. I'm with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to work you through. Uh, all you've got to do is ask for help. Now, listen, I'm a bloke. I'm rubbish at asking for help. Um, particularly, you know, on a Saturday afternoon when I'm trying to put... Uh, uh, a curtain pole up and it's coming off the wall the words I really need are Judy I need some help please and then she comes and then we sort it out and it's fine that's what prayer is about prayer is when we call out to God sometimes say I need some help please and he goes yep I'm right there and other times it's just I just want to be with you I just want to have a conversation and have a bit of a chat with you that's what it means to engage with God. Our last song is, uh, is one you, you did a couple of weeks ago called Speak Your Name and uh, just encourage you to do that. When, when things are good, um, just say to God, God, oh, this is going well, isn't it? Uh, and when things aren't going so well, that's also a great moment to go, oh, I could do some help here, please, God. And he goes, yep, I'm right there. If you don't know Jesus, I tell you, you're so missing out. And if you'd like to know some more, Come and see one of us at the end and we can talk about that. But in the meantime, we're going to speak God's name. Let's stand together, shall we? Every day is filled with voices much noise inside my head and when I'm scared and when I'm feeling all alone all I've got to do is speak your name say it by day say it by night say it till the end of time all I've got to do is speak your name friends throughout the day and when I close my eyes to sleep the night away all I've got to do is speak your name say it by day say it by night say it till the end of time all I've got to do is speak your name say it by day Say it by night, say it to the end of time. All I've got to do is speak your name. Cause Jesus, your name covers my heart, it covers my mind. All of the time, Jesus, your name, it covers my heart, it covers my mind. Time. All I've got to do is speak your name. All I've got to do is speak your name. Speak your name. And again. 
Say you by day, say you by night, say it till the end of time. All I've got to do is speak your name. Cause Jesus, your name covers my heart, it covers my mind, all of the time. luck with oh that's working again now <laughs> yes um i'm going to ask jen to pop up who's just come and emma who have just come back from sunday club um going on from what simon was saying earlier about how as a church household we're we're growing and things are changing and things moving on um many of you know that myself and joe used to be sunday club leaders um, we've done it for a long time and the time was right for our season of Sunday Club leading to, to move on. And with that in mind, a number of people have stepped up to, um, to start leading Sunday Club, for which we are so thankful. Laura's over there, she's going to be doing it as well, moving forward, which is amazing. Um, but Jen, if you'd like to quickly pop up and talk about what you guys did today, that would be really lovely. Thank you. I think we've got some creations coming up as well, which is amazing. Oh, and Crash have got some, our stars have got something to show too. Wow, it's all show and tell this morning. That's amazing. <gasps> wow. Come over here so we can see you. You're going to wave to the people on the camera as well. Mm -hmm. So today in Sunday Club, we explored what it means to belong to the truth, and um, our children were brilliant, and we made crowns to symbolize Jesus, the King, in who we can always find the truth. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, Rachel? Yes. Okay, stars are coming up now as well. Oh, a bit of glitter. Do you want to speak? We were learning about angels. Angels? What have you made? Um, angels and golden angels. Don't you concern about Remember his name? Angel Mary. Uh, a little bit of dirt. Gabriel. Mary. So we're on the countdown to Christmas stars. 32 sleep. Oh, so. 32. <laughs> How exciting. So we've got to start early. How exciting. Thank you, everybody. That, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, something that I've been absolutely in my mind that I've thought I must remember to do that I almost forgot is say, if any of you would like to give financially to the church, you can do so either on the plate on your way out or on the card machine. We're very fancy now. We can do it with a card machine, which is really exciting. Um, so yes, um, anything would be very appreciated. That would be amazing. Um, and thank you all this morning. Thank you for everybody that does things in our church household. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes that, that maybe I don't thank people enough for. So all of you that do stuff, thank you so much. Um, and all that's left is the blessing that I have. I did have it in front of me. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you all so much. <laughs>